Hello and welcome. My name is Jill Wickmore Welsh. The website is jillwickmore-welsh.com if you want to get in touch with me. It'd be lovely to hear from you and hear how you're doing out there in wherever it is you're listening to me from. I'm based here in Reading in Berkshire. It's winter and it's cold and it's chilly. And this lesson that you're going to be doing today is part of a series that I've designed. It's a Somni Moves series that goes with my program called Fast Asleep. And it's designed to be for those people who have insomnia and bad sleep problems. This lesson is also written with someone in mind. So I was um, recording this lesson thinking of somebody as I was recording it. Now remember, none of these lessons that I'm putting out are designed to be a medical treatment. If you want to contact me, I am a clinician, I'm a physiotherapist and psychotherapist. And if you want to contact me with a specific problem, a specific clinical problem, that's great. But these lessons are just that, they are lessons, they are explorations. You're using the laboratory of your body and the creativity of your mind. And you're trying for yourself just to do some discoveries to find out a little bit more as with most of the people who come to see me, they want to find out more who they are, what makes them tick, who their authentic person is deep inside. And these kind of movements are very revealing. They tell you a lot about your habits and patterns and traits and how you move through life, etc. If you do have any physical problems, though, remember that you should always talk to your physician before you start doing some movement work. That's just common sense, isn't it? You could do it in your imagination if you wanted to, but you could also just talk to your physician if maybe you're recovering after an accident or illness or, I don't know, you've got some kind of problem. Just check in with the doctor. Say, is it okay if I do some very gentle movement work? Um, it, it, what do you think? And if your doctor says fine, then that's great. Or ask your physical therapist or similar. But as I say, this lesson is would be great if what you were wanting to do was to actually become a little more aware of your your tensing patterns throughout your thoracic spine, your rib cage and your chest. You might find that this has some sort of effect or impact on the way that you roll over. It might have some sort of impact on the way that you walk, you move. One of the great things about lessons is it that you can you can apply the lessons to something that you do during the day. And this is what I really excel at because when I first studied this work, I was working with Team GB as physiotherapist and I was working a massive amount with athletes. And so I took this work, immediately I began to start to study it. I took this work for myself and began to start to design lessons. And that's way back in 1994. And I designed lessons which would really resolve some of the problems that the people that I was working with were having. And many of those people had musculoskeletal problems. I had a very busy, thriving, overly busy, stressful practice that I was running. Um, And I was also, as I say, working with top level elite athletes who wanted to get that extra little bit of something out of themselves. And these kinds of movement lessons have incredible flexibility of application. So there are dozens of ways that I think of applying the lesson that we're going to go through today. But for you, just go with the flow. Just enjoy it. And as I say, leave a comment here below. Subscribe if you find this helpful. Subscribe, be a subscriber. It would be really great. I've had quite a few downloads over the years, but it would be great to get a few more followers and subscribers and actually get this channel shared out a little bit more so that more people could be benefiting from enabling themselves to actually have some more awareness of their whole embodied self the whole authentic embodied self, not just your mindset, but actually your physical set, your signature moves and things like this. So I'm going to dive straight into the lesson in a minute. Remember to get yourself in the right frame of mind, get all your bits and pieces, your props, your mats, your bits and pieces all around you. Remember, make sure you're not going to be lying on the floor and the door's open and the dog's going to come and jump on you or the grandkids or the children or anything. And just take your time. Make sure you're in a really good space. The lesson's going to last about just over half an hour. You will need to lie down for the lesson and you will need to stand up. So have some space, have some mats, have some time, get yourself ready. And as I say, enjoy. Enjoy. 
observe yourself in action. Find a place to stand, standing with your arms just hanging comfortably at your sides. And then gently turn to look to the right and then to the left and repeat this movement several times. Don't stretch or strain. Just do what comes easy without any excess effort. How does it feel to turn like this? Does it feel easy and light or heavy and stiff? What parts of yourself participate in the movement? What parts of yourself remain still? Do certain parts of your body seem to limit the movement, preventing you from turning further? Don't try to change anything at this point. Remember, you're perfectly imperfect, just as you are. So just observe yourself as you turn. How far to the right and to the left can you see when you turn like this? As you turn, make some mental note of some object that you can see to your far right and then another as you turn to your far left. And, and that will give you a measure of your range of movement. And you can use it for later comparison if you want to. Now double check where you put your feet so you can remember this position and place when you come back. And now find a comfortable place to lie because you're going to observe yourself in repose. So I want you to lie on your back on some kind of soft mat or a carpet on the floor, but make it a firm surface. If you find that your head tips back a bit, put a firm pillow or folded blanket under your head for comfort. You can even put some paperback books or similar Check in with yourself and notice whether your forehead and your chin are about in a line or if your head is tipped back a little bit. And just make those adjustments you want to and if need be, you can stop this recording and change your position and make adjustments so that you feel really comfortable at the start of the lesson. And indeed, feeling comfortable at the start of a lesson can actually be a lesson in itself. Bend your knees and just place the soles of your feet on the floor. And just rest quietly for a moment or two and observe yourself. Observe your state of mind. Observe how you're feeling right now. Check in with yourself completely. And then allow your legs to go long. And begin to notice the back surface of yourself. What parts of your body make the most distinct contact with the, the floor or surface beneath you? Is it some part of your foot or your leg? Is it your bottom, your buttocks or your low back? Is it your thoracic spine, back of your head, your arms? Which makes the most distinct contact for you? And can you feel that certain parts of your back surface presses into the floor more distinctly while other parts press less so or maybe don't press in at all? Pay particular attention to your shoulders as they lie on the floor. First your right shoulder and then your left shoulder. How does your right shoulder make contact with the floor? Does it make contact with the floor? Can you feel it touching the floor or not? Your shoulder blade is probably touching the floor, but what about the tip? 
of your shoulder near the acromion, the acromioclavicular joint. Is that off the floor? Or does it touch the floor at a single point, at several different points? Or does it lie flat on the floor like a dinner plate? Does the contact between your right shoulder and the floor feel snug and complete? Or does it feel awkward and uncertain? Or maybe not there at all? And then notice your left shoulder. How does your left shoulder contact the floor? At a point or points? Or does it lie snug against the floor? Avoid comparing to the other side. Just notice this side as just a separate cousin to your right arm. Part of the family, but might be very different. So just allow yourself to notice how this left shoulder is. You might begin to notice the differences between the way and your right and your left shoulder rests might be different, might be similar, but let's not engage in judging whether one is right and one is wrong. They might be very similar, like identical twins. Or they may be such distant cousins that they are so like chalk and cheese, very different. Now let's begin to start to float one of your shoulders. Maybe we'll start with the right one. But if for you, your right one is difficult or challenging or something is happening on your right side, then you can start with the left one or you can start with the right one in your imagination. So begin to slowly and gently lift your right shoulder a little bit off the floor. That's right, just move your shoulder very softly as if it were floating upwards on a gentle breeze. Then gradually allow your shoulder just to sink back to the floor. Pause a few moments, allowing your shoulder to come to a rest. And then begin again, begin again, repeating several times and remembering to pause after each movement just to give yourself the time, just to allow that movement to complete. As you move your shoulder like that, notice, are there any other parts of yourself you move in concert with the shoulder? You'll certainly feel your shoulder blade lifting off the floor and then touching down again. But what about at the front? Do you feel your right collarbone moving too? How about your sternum, that bone at the front? It's a vertical breastbone in the center of your chest where your ribs join. Can you identify physical sensations in your ribs or your back when you move like this? How about your belly or your waist? This small movement of moving, moving this shoulder can be really complex. Now then, let's think of using a hand just to monitor the movement. A lot of times, feeling and sensing what's happening inside our bodies and something that we do a lot during the day. So it might not be a sense that's particularly well developed, whereas our visual sense and our touch can be more developed because we look around all the time at things happening and we feel with our fingers. But sometimes that internal sensing isn't so powerful. So let's use a hand. So bend your left elbow so you can touch your sternum with the fingers of your left hand and continue floating your right shoulder up and down. And remember, whenever you want to have a rest, you can just take one. As you float your shoulder up and down, while putting your left hand on the front and monitoring the movement of your sternum. Can you feel your sternum moving a little? Just moving a little to one side maybe, or up or down, as you float your shoulder upwards and back to the middle, as you float it downwards. 
If you don't notice any movement at all, then that's okay. Just notice what it is that you do. Take your time. Slow, gentle movements. Rest whenever you want to. Observe how much effort you put into doing this activity. And however much effort you're putting into it, reduce it by 50%. So that you allow yourself to really feel yourself as you move. Slow down the movement as well. By taking time to really feel, you're going to develop a whole new sense of yourself. And that will enable you to be far more creative and spontaneous in everything in life that you choose to do. The way that you move on the mat says something about the way you move through life. Now stop and rest a while and notice how does your right shoulder make contact and connect with the floor now? Is it different from when you started? What sort of difference is there? Just observe. This is your own laboratory. So observe yourself. Now we're going to synchronize moving your head and your shoulder. So come back to continue as before, slowly floating your right shoulder up and down onto the floor again. And then pause a little to feel the difference after each movement. Now, as you do this movement of lifting your shoulder, do you feel your head tending to roll a little bit to one side? You might experience this as a sort of gentle shifting of the point of contact between the back of your head and the support, or you might notice a slight change in direction of your gaze each time you move your shoulder. So notice what it is for you as you lift that shoulder. Do you notice if you're just idly gazing ahead of you? If you're slowly looking over a little bit more to one side? Or maybe as you lift that shoulder, you just feel that rolling. What is it for you? Do a few more moment, movements. And each time you float your shoulder up, deliberately begin to start to roll your head very gently to the left. See if you can find the proportion of shoulder to head movement that feels just right. Imagine that your shoulder and your head move in perfect unison as if they were linked by an invisible connecting rod. Repeat the just right movement several times, pausing to rest whenever you want, and certainly a little bit after each repetition. Now just stop and rest completely and just feel the effect of what you've done. You can close your eyes if you want to. If it helps you to feel more inside your body or the contact that you're making. Or you can try with your eyes open. But notice how your right shoulder makes contact with the floor right now. Now come back to floating the shoulder. Slowly floating your right shoulder up and down a few more times. Does the movement feel a little bit different now from the way it was when you started? Is it getting lighter, easier, smoother, softer? Can you feel any pleasurable sensations as you move? If so, you're definitely on the right track. It's great to feel happy, joyful. Now stop and rest quietly and feel the effect of what you've done. Feel the difference between your right shoulder and between the right side of your back 
and the left side of your back and your left shoulder between the whole right side of your body and the left does one side feel longer, softer, more at ease? Does one side surrender in weight to the floor more completely? Now I want you to imagine your shoulder lying on your back just as you were before. And in your imagination, only do the same slow, gentle, floating movements with your shoulder. And this time, you're going to do it with your left shoulder. Try to imagine all parts of yourself that would participate in the movement. Your shoulder blade, your collarbones, your ribs, your sternum, your head, your neck. And really pay attention to the movement of your sternum. Try to imagine it accurately. And repeat the imaginary movement many times until the image of the movement with all of its parts is quite clear in your mind. Now finally, do three or four actual movements of your left shoulder. Slowly floating your left shoulder upward and then floating it back down to the floor. You may discover that the movement is already without any actual practice quite free and easy, quite light and smooth. When your mental image is clear and complete, you can perfect a movement without much practice. The movement naturally conforms to your mental image of it and you fire the neural pathways that are required. Now stop and rest and feel the results of what you've done. If as you're lying like this, you want to bring your legs up and bend your knees, have your feet in standing for a moment or two and just sense what it's like to do this, then you can change your position. You can stop the recording at any time. And then lengthen your legs. Now come to rock your shoulders and roll your ribs. So float your right shoulder up and down one time and then do the same with your left. So you're repeating an alternating movement. And observe what it's like to do this. Observe if your intention changes. If the speed of the movement changes. Observe what it is for you to do this alternately and allow the alternating movements of the shoulders to generate a slow rhythmic rolling of your entire rib cage from side to side. Invite every part of yourself to participate in the movement, your head, your ribs, your sternum, your back, your waist and even maybe your hips. You may even feel your legs and feet begin to respond. But remember, this isn't about making them work. This is about just noticing where the movement flows and goes to. Relax your forehead. Relax your eyebrows. Relax your lips. Relax your tongue. Relax your jaw. Allow your lips to be a little open. Allow your breath to be very soft and light. You don't need to huff and puff. You don't need to hold your breath. 
Don't need to synchronize your breathing with the movement. Simply let your breath come and go of its own accord and you will automatically get just the right amount of oxygen for each moment of your life. And then stop and rest and feel the result of what you've done. Allow your legs to lengthen. Allow them to be soft too. And now unlocking your cage, slowly floating that right shoulder upright. And as you do, very gently press your left shoulder into the floor. You needn't press hard. If it's not pleasant for you to press that shoulder into the floor, just push a little with your arm. And lower your right shoulder and stop pressing on the left. And then float the shoulder again. Float the right shoulder up and allow yourself to press down a little on that left shoulder. And after each moment, just do a pause when you do this movement, you'll feel your sternum begin to move in a curious trajectory. Does it slide or twist or turn to the left? Or is it a combination of all of those things? Does the upper end of your sternum move in unison with the lower end or are they slightly out of phase? Have you ever really observed or even imagined your chest moving like this. And take a rest. And then reverse the movement. Floating your left shoulder, pressing your right shoulder to the floor. And after each movement, pausing a moment and then beginning again repeating several times, then stopping, resting and feeling and noticing, is your head engaged in this movement? Is your eye focus changing as you see the different things ahead of you? How is your head moving as you do this? And then alternate. Alternately, float your right shoulder and press your left to the floor. Then float your left shoulder and press to the right and repeat many times, but in your own pace. Notice that pace. How slow does it feel comfortable for you to move? How slow can you go? How small can you go? How easy can you make it? How much less effort can you put into achieving it? It's a funny sort of movement, isn't it? Can you feel that the formerly rigid cage of your ribs is beginning to become open, soft, even pliable? With a splendidly mobile chest like that, who knows what you might accomplish? At the very least, you'll gain a different perspective on life. Then add to that just a dash of that boundless curiosity, ingenuity and enthusiasm of yours and creativity and voila, the world is your oyster. Now stop the movement and rest and feel and notice how your left and right shoulder make contact with the floor now. How about the right and left sides of your back? Compare the right side of your body to the left side. Does one side feel longer, softer, more at ease? Does one side surrender to its weight to the floor more completely? Or do they feel more or less balanced now? 
Take your time. And when you've finished your exploring on the floor, slowly roll to your side and come up into standing. Take your time. And stand in that same position that you were when you started with your arms resting comfortably by your sides. And gently begin to start to move your right shoulder a little bit forwards and back to the starting position, much as you did when you were lying down. And repeat that several times. When you move your shoulder like this, do your head, your ribs, your sternum and your chest move too? Where do your eyes go? What happens with your gaze? Now repeat the same thing on your left side, on the left shoulder. Try the same thing, moving your left shoulder forward, allowing your head, your ribs, your sternum and your chest to become engaged. Your left shoulder moves forward and you turn to your right. And what do you see with your eyes? And come back to your right shoulder and move your right shoulder forward. And at the same time, move your left shoulder back. And then relax and come back to the starting position. And repeat just on this one side several times. And see if you can utilize your newfound freedom of the chest and the sternum while you're standing up as well. And then do the reverse. Move your left shoulder forward and your right shoulder back. And look for that feeling of freedom in your sternum. And turn to look to your right. Now gently turn and look to the right and then to the left several times as you did at the beginning. As before, don't stretch or strain. Just do what comes easy without any excess effort. How does it feel to turn like this now? Does it feel easy and light or heavy and stiff? What parts of yourself participate in the movement? What parts remain still? Can you feel that certain impediments to the movement have been removed and you can move more freely and easily? How far to the right and left can you see when you turn like this? Can you only see the landmarks you chose at the beginning Or can you see 10 or 20 or even 30 degrees further? How far can you see to the right? Make several several more movements. Turning your trunk right and left and allowing your arms just to swing freely and easily. Allowing your chest to be free and flexible and looking for the most pleasurable way to do the movement. Try to keep an even rhythm. Try turning a little faster and then a little slower. What's the natural rhythm for you? What's the rhythm it's just you? Just your rhythm in life. Just the way you like it to be. Can you breathe freely and easily as you move like that? Now, take a walk. Allow your arms just to swing naturally. And notice what it feels like to take your body for a walk with your arms swinging in this way. Enjoy.
Hi, so I hope you enjoyed the lesson. It was great to have you. Hopefully I'll have you back in and do another lesson another day. And if you found there was some sort of benefit from what you did today, then do share it with other people. All the merrier. These are out there in the ether. This Legacy Life podcast has been out now since 2008. And have a dip around. You'll find some various bits and pieces. And you might find something else that's helpful for you. If not, and you think to yourself, well, I don't know, I have a thing about my body, I'd actually quite like to be able to use it and move it in a different way. Or, I don't know, you've got to develop your voice or develop the way you run or jump or climb or sleep or whatever, walk. <laughs> Give me a call and... Um, and then we can have a chat. You can get in touch with me by my website and you can even actually book um, a 20 minute uh, free consultation via my Calendarly website, which I think is on my website there. If you have a look, you can see there's a button that you can click and you can actually sign up for a webcam appointment. Sometimes it gets abused and I get some very strange people who book appointments because they think it's a bit of fun, but that's not what I do. If I get too many of those, I'm gonna to have to change the whole system. But anyway, for now, that system is open for people to be able to get in touch with me. As I say, I'm here in Reading in Berkshire, UK time. I'm quite happy to do some training and teaching. If you're somebody who's a bodywork practitioner who says, I'd really like to learn a bit more about clinical Feldenkrais, then great, let's get a group of you together and let's start training. So have a beautiful day. It is the 12th of November today and it is winter in the UK and it's quite chilly. So I'm off now to go and do some other bits and pieces. So love you. Bye.